Okay. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about that and about some of the things that you would tell new girls who are coming into the industry. Well, first off, I, I'm so flattered that you would reach out to me for that, of, of all reasons. Um, I was really taken aback. That was just one of those things where I was just like, like, you know, you're like peeing and you're like tweeting. And yeah. Just like, you, you didn't even think about it. But yeah. the reception that I received f- from that series of tweets, it just, especially from new girls, was so, so gratifying. I, I, um, it shows a real need for that kind of advice. Exactly. I think that was what I was taken aback by. And honestly, to tell you the truth, for the last um, six or seven months, I've just realized that while I love performing, I, I, I love performing, <laughs> um, I feel a kind of responsibility, and I and I don't want to suggest that I am somehow qualified for it. It's more of a, I see a vacuum and people aren't filling it, mm-hmm. and so I'm hoping that the more that people talk and contribute to these topics, that more qualified people than I can, yeah. can stand up and, and speak about these things. Right. Um, but as far as new girls, the biggest issue that I see that – they have coming in. And I felt this in other jobs. I, I remember being taken advantage of as a bartender whenever I was in college, um, just having to agree to getting, you know, patted on the ass by people mm-hmm. in authority over me and having to flirt with shift managers to get shifts because, you know, my food on the table depended on that. Yep. Um, and just being forced into that. And so whenever we started looking into things about porn reform. Mm-hmm. Not that not that we're broken, but we definitely have areas that we need to fix. Um, the biggest issue that happens that I see is that girls get into a situation where they feel that they don't have the economic security mm-hmm. to enforce their boundaries. If mm-hmm. it's a, oh, if I say no on a set, that if I say I don't want to do something on a set, that that's going to reflect on my agent. That's going to reflect to the studio. That's going to reflect to these producers. And they're going to say she's difficult. She's, they're going to say yeah. that she's a diva. They're going to say that she's all of these, um, all of these derivative words. And and we hear people talk about women this way on mm-hmm. sets. We hear people say, "Oh, she is difficult." And then you get into it, and it's like, really, what their problems are is that it sounds like she's expressing more opinions on how she would like to be treated and touched than the average girl. I so agree with you. And um, I've experienced that so much because I've had people tell me like, oh, this girl's a diva or whatever. And then I'll work with them and they're fine. And all it generally is, is yeah, they, they have certain boundaries that they want respected or, and they're more um, vocal. And yeah, that, or they're more and vocal. why is that bad? Right. Or sometimes, I mean, to be honest, sometimes girls are, are truly just, I think, nervous about the experience and they just need some reassurance. And so I Absolutely. try to find that when, I try to remember when I feel that a girl is being difficult, it's probably coming from a place of fear. She's not trying to make my life hard. Absolutely. She, there's something that she's nervous about. You know, like I've shot girls before who will like, and this to be fair, makes me inside crazy, but like, they'll be like, are you sure this position looks good? Do I look fat here? Like they'll question Mm -hmm. me and I'll be like, yeah, I know you look great. No, you know, and in my head, I'm like, no, you look like shit. That's why I'm going to shoot you in this position. Like shut up and trust me. Yeah, exactly. But I have to remember like they're nervous. And then, so there was one girl that I worked with like that. And then after she saw the pictures, she trusted me. And then the next time we worked together, it was a totally different experience. Absolutely. And People forget that because of this relationship that we have, like, I think the average length of a porn performer's career is like three months or something Mm. like that. There's Mm -hmm. like some crazy statistic for like the average length. Yeah. Um, And so a lot of us don't have the time to build up the relationships because Mm -hmm. I see a difference now in how I'm treated as someone who is quote unquote a name. Mm -hmm. Um, They're like, oh, she's rated number such and such on Pornhub. We have Mm -hmm. to be nice to her. But Mm -hmm. I remember how they treated me whenever I was new. Mm -hmm. And I know that those two experiences are different. And so one of the big things that I see is believing girls whenever someone um, does something to them that you go, oh, they've never treated me that way. But I think when a lot of us observe it, it's because they know better than to treat us that way, which suggests a kind of sinister um, scenario. And so the question becomes, you know, how do we, how do we fix that? How do we make that not happen? And the biggest way that I see that happening is girls developing their own streams of income. The things like Snapchat, things like OnlyFans, things like many vids, uh, Pornhub premium channels, things along those nature where they're able to directly sell to fans and consumers mm-hmm. and gain the rewards from that, you know, and it's not that they have to 
do that to the detriment of their porn career, but to treat it as a form of, I believe that diversified income streams is a form of self-care because yeah. it gives you the autonomy to say, no, I can turn down this shoot because mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable with it. Right. Um, I will tell you a story, if I may. I would um, love to hear a story. About, so whenever I first came into the business, I was really excited to shoot for this one particular company because they just did this really pretty, soft, romantic stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff that I had masturbated to in high school and Mm -hmm. college and Mm -hmm. all of that stuff, like just stuff that I really liked. And they were doing a cosplay feature of something that I super loved, Mm -hmm. and I was so excited to do the shoot. And uh, I had done maybe less than than 20 scenes at that point. I'm like brand spanking new. Right. Um, So I drive three hours to get to the location because I still lived in San Diego at the time. And I get there, and the director pulls me aside and says, you know, did your agent talk to you about what we're doing today? And he's got that tone in his voice, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to like this. (laughs) No. He didn't tell me what we're doing today. What are we doing today? He's like, well, we're doing a rough scene today. I'm like, really? You guys are, like, glam gonzo. Like, you're like, you you don't even, like, let an eyelash get out of place. Like, Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? Um... And they're like, yeah, like the director, the directive that we're getting from corporate is to push compliance with how rough we want the scene to be. It's so funny because I totally know exactly what you're talking about because <laughs> <laughs> I've had this experience as well. Yes, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I'm like so new. I'm like, push compliance. What the fuck does that mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm just like, okay. I mean, at that point, I don't really. There's not really a space in which I can think about, okay, do I want to do this or do I not want to do this? I've just driven three hours, and it's this company that has this sort of like pre-established mm-hmm. d- definition of what they do, and so I'm, I'm, conf- I'm confused right. going into right, it. Right, right. And I agree to do the scene, and I have an incredibly high pain tolerance. I, like... Really, um, I'm one of those people that just the nerves are kind of crossed in me, mm-hmm. and so you like pinch my nipple, and I'm like, ooh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. I just like a little bit of pain. That was they fucked the shit out of me. I th- hit my cervix so hard that I had to go and lay down in the bathroom and dry heave from the oh, pain. Jesus. And and I tell that story not to elicit sympathy. You know, I definitely had that moment where I went home and like had my like stereotypical cry in the shower. Mm-hmm. And I and I had to go back and think about this analytically. And I was like, okay, I do not like what happened there, mm-hmm. but what went wrong there? Mm-hmm. Who did what here? So obviously there was a failure to, uh, with miscommunication here. Someone failed to communicate with whom. Um, and then, you know, no one forced me into this scenario, but I need to think about how I can extricate myself from these scenarios in the future. And at the time, with the level of economic security that I had, I was just getting into porn. I'd put out a lot of initial, there's a lot of expenditures initially in getting in porn mm-hmm. in terms of body maintenance and wardrobe and travel mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I realized, you know, if I had had my secondary income streams more set up at that point, I probably would have stopped and thought more critically and gone, okay, this isn't something, you know, I need mm-hmm. to stop this. I need to stop. Yeah. I need to call my agent. I need to figure out what's going on. And then, you know, I would feel more comfortable at, at that point saying, all right. I need to change the script here. We need to soften this up. We need mm-hmm. to like do these things and that things. It's not that anybody forced me into that scenario. It was that I felt that I had to go along and be agreeable in order to get more bookings, even though it was beyond my level of comfort. Right. And I look back on that situation now, and I realize I've probably encountered that situation 20 or 30 times over, but it's never gotten to the point where I was dry heaving on a bathroom floor again because... I developed my income streams to the point where I was never dependent on a booking. Mm -hmm. And I could say, we need to change the script, or Mm -hmm. we need to stop and do this, or Mm -hmm. we need to do something differently. And if they ever came back to me with a, no, we can't do that, I could be like, well, sorry, I got to go. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's that's a great power to be able to have. And, um, and And I love that you give that advice, because I think a lot of Girls don't realize that. I think, especially when they're new, mm-hmm. when they're new, they come in, they get booked a ton. You know, that's kind of always the way it is. And then you get shot out, and then there's not as much work happening. And then you're like, "Ooh, what do I do now?" Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, these girls they've never had like, you know, because it can be a quick, big source of income, and they've never had that kind of money. And then they go and it's spend the it on stupid shit. You know, like a fucking new car that they can't afford, purses, dumb Absolutely. stuff like that. 
And um, and yeah, they don't take control of their own because you can do that now. I mean, the internet is allowed to do that. It has given so much power back to the models that they never had before. Oh yeah, it's completely democratized porn because the thing is, is that I have just as much of a shot at this point to acquiring new. So people are turning eighteen every day. People are getting credit cards every day and and purchasing porn for the first time. Right now, as it stands, I have just as much of a possibility to lock in a new prospective porn purchasing client as any um, any major studio does. Like mm-hmm. I can lock them into my Snapchats, I can lock them into my many vids to where I'm capturing those sales. Mm-hmm. And I can do that just as effectively as browsers or mofos or evil angel or any of those can right. at this point because of the internet and because of social media. Right. And girls don't realize that they have the power now. Mm-hmm. And I compare porn girls and, and porn performers, not just not just women, uh, men and women, a lot of ways to athletes. Uh, a lot of them come from backgrounds where economic management uh, is not a taught skill. Mm-hmm. And we don't really encourage that education within school systems. It often comes from, it's passed down from generation to generation Which, as a privilege. by the way, also makes me crazy. Like, oh, I've my God. never understood, like, why they don't have, like, just basic life shit 101, like, filing your taxes. Exactly. Like, um, getting a credit card, like, getting a bank, setting up checking credit. Checking your credit. Checking your credit, just, like... Like basic things, calculating, that compounding know. interest. I can't like tell that. you how many letters I get from the IRS of liens on girls who don't pay their taxes. Mm-hmm. I mean, every year I get it's all terrifying. these all these letters from the IRS. Like this person owes this much money. This person owes this much money. Like, do not pay. You know, basically what they're telling me is that if I hire these people again to not pay them and to take the money, I would pay them and give it to the IRS. It's terrifying. And I'm just like, and I you know hear people that go years they don't pay their taxes like. Do you think that the IRS isn't going to find you? Like- I know one AVN, an AVN award-winning performer who shot hundreds of titles, who is my age, I'm about to be 25, um, who owes the IRS $300,000. Yeah. And that's that at that point you look at that and that go Someone failed to educate you here. Yeah. This is this is obviously this is not normal behavior. Someone's failed to educate you here. And so the question then becomes where do girls get education on this mm-hmm. topic? And if you're clever, you sort of pick things up by osmosis here and there, but really when you look at the girls who succeed on like a business and longevity level, it it's the girls who come from privileged backgrounds who know what to do with a windfall of cash whenever mm-hmm. they get it because they have a team of people who are advising them who mm-hmm. have been able to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I started asking myself about six or seven months ago, how can we work to level that playing field a little bit to where girls who are getting in now who are starting from square one and know nothing how can they not have to struggle the way that we do now? Mm-hmm. It, and when you're new and when you're bumping into things and figuring out, okay, this this thing I can't do because of this and this thing I should do and, and all of those things, how do we basically create crash courses for new girls? Um, and related to that tweet, actually, uh, Kevin Moore, who is the, um, he's the, the widower of August Ames, mm-hmm reached out to me and has we've been working together on the August Ames project actually we just started working together on that he's been working on it for some time now um and the basic premise of the August Ames project is that every performer who has ever shot for a major studio should be able to access both adequate mental health care mm-hmm. and adequate resources to setting up their own income streams because we both do strongly believe that having your own independent income away from the studios is a form of Mm -hmm. self-care. So he started doing a series of educational videos and I'm in some of those talking about just the basics, something as simple as walking you through the basic steps of signing up for Fan Centro or My Free Cams or Cam Soda or things like that to... Setting up income, um, setting up income monitoring software, and you know, doing bookkeeping and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Just all of these cheat codes that you amass over years, talking to your network of girls. Just what would happen if we just gave girls those resources yeah. just up front? If we gave them, you know, our years of 
of struggling and we simplified that into wisdom that girls could take and and apply to their lives early on so that way they perhaps don't have as you said these sort of traumatic experiences early on yeah that color their view of the way that the industry works yeah yeah because i mean me personally i feel deeply enriched by my time in the adult performance industry i feel um I feel that 